we have uh, another presentation. I requested this presentation uh, not long time ago, but only yesterday. <laughs> uh, because we want, we are dreaming to have a uh, um, journal of AATS. And we want to have it uh, bor um, born in October. So I requested uh, Dr. Um, Nestor Ilioma, the founding president of ACRA and dean of Manila Adventist College to uh, challenge us, to inform us, to orient us on how we can make it a reality. Doctor, can we give him a hand? So, doctor, you have 23 minutes and question and answer. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the birthday of my youngest son, who is the best friend of the son of Pastor Hinibago. That is the reason I consented to make a presentation today. I was stressed yesterday when he whispered to me that the presenter at 2.30 to 3 will not be able to make it. And he said, kindly present a paper tomorrow. I think that is a torture academically, but I have been used to that even in other forums, not only in IAS. But I think it is a very profitable exercise that I believe we have been invited to be with you. I hope next time the invitation will not be late so we can also present our papers. And I think I will challenge you on that because there are others who are coming from smaller colleagues who has training also to make presentations. My presentation this afternoon will be an interlude to what we have been hearing about religious pluralism. This is the sixth annual AATS forum. And it is the intention of its forum that a journal should be presented and the best research be published. Even at the Theological Forum of Ayas, it will be, how many? 26 already? Is coming November? How many have been published already out of those presentations? This is the challenge. I'm not coming here as an intruder. I'm a graduate of IAS. But I'm a graduate of ABGTS as well, from the Asia Baptist Graduate Theological Seminary. And during our forum in that seminary, after three months, the best research presented will be published and accepted in the journal. And it's, so it is a challenge for us now. Now, the challenge is to publish or perish. It is very easy for you who are in the academy, particularly here at the Graduate School of Ayas, that your papers will be presented and will be accepted in your journal. How about if the pastors return already to the respective field of labor and they are still continually finding time to research and write? Where will they publish their papers? Who will accept them and monitor them as they go out? This is a challenge for us because my message will be the challenge to theological research, publish or perish. Now, there are three phases of theological research and I do not know what phase you are in. Number one, preparation. I believe all of you have been taught in your theological research classes how to prepare what? Exegetical paper, another ethnographic paper, and other papers you are presenting, correct? And we are motivated differently by different motivations. It can be academic pressure. It is a requirement for the degree, or else you cannot complete the degree, whether you like it or not, correct? Now, if you are already back to your university or college or whatever institution you are in, it is also a requirement for your academic rank. Correct or not? It is a requirement for academic ranking. You cannot be an assistant professor, associate professor, or a full-pledged professor if you have not done what? Publications. Now, there are other motivating factors coming from the outside. Me, coming as an academic dean, accreditation is a very important aspect. Here at IAS, they have their own accreditation in Atisaya and even in our IBEAAA. Ours, we have our three accrediting bodies in our school. We have our AAA, the Adventist Accrediting Association. 
We have our association, Christian schools, colleges, and universities accrediting council. No longer accrediting agency, it's now accrediting council. And then we have also, in which ATS is a member, the Asian Theological Seminary. That's the only seminary that is member of eight AC, ACSCU, ACI. Then, of course, the PAKUKOA, the Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities Commission on Accreditation, the biggest accrediting body in the Philippines. The question is, without research, what? Your school will not be accredited. It is 30 to 40% of the evaluating instrument for research, whether it is a student research, faculty research, or staff research. They are all required. Even secretaries are required. So to us in the field of theology, may I ask you, what have you been? So you have your preparation, how to prepare your paper, and then we are now on the second aspect. This is what we are doing, and that is what we're doing presentation. How do we make presentations? Most of the IAS presentation are podium presentation. Sorry to tell you that. There is another way to make presentation, and that is I will recommend later for not all, so others can participate, is poster presentation. If you go to big universities and research forum internationally, poster. You give time 30 to 40 minutes after lunch time, all the posters are there, all the researchers are there, and you are there to explain as people go by about your research. You don't need to stand here and be questioned by people who did not study your research. And then, of course, the last is publication. Where are we? Okay? In the Adventist circle, I do not know. Here, I'm talking about Filipinos. How many of the Adventist pastors and scholars have been published in our official journal of Adventist Theological Society? How many? I'm not bragging. I'm one. Okay? And Pastor Regalado, and practically the father of Brother Garil Bader. Probably he had written. But how many? Only the scholars coming from the US and Europe are the one presenting there, accepted. Why? Because it is a peer-reviewed journal. Meaning, you cannot be accepted for your journal to be printed if it is not peer-reviewed. Now, let's have a little summary of what we have been talking about. In the preparation, you have eight commandments of theological research. If it is not theological, it is not deep. So we talk about the presentation we are making. Are the presentation deep or shallow? I was whispering to a somebody seated beside me yesterday. I said, there seems something nothing new about what they're presenting. I've heard that to Dr. Reyes and Dr. Fernandez many, many years ago on how to approach the Muslim. And still, we are still talking about it. Correct me if I'm wrong. There may be other suggestions, but I've been hearing them in my professors before. They've been talking about that. Wrestle with an angel when you make a research. Very basic in the preparation. Next, pick a what? A prism. You can't cover everything in your paper. So narrow the topic. Down. Okay. Next will be what? Tell the what? The truth, words, and all. Don't avoid what? Paradox and inconsistency, but charitably address them. Then, what's the next one? Read, formulate, talk, read, and reformulate ideas, and then articulate. Then, we have what? Move from experience to expertise. I like what Abner was doing yesterday. You deal with expertise, and then suddenly we go to your your personal approach on the expertise. Examine your what? Sources. That's very basic when you write theological research. And finally, discern what? Meaning in paradoxical combination of natural and supernatural. Now let's go to the presentation. It's just the introduction. The main part will be on the publication. The presentation, as I have said, 
I will propose next time at the AATS that you will be making poster presentation. It will be a little bit expensive. Why? Because you need to buy a stand. You need to put it in the tarpaulin. But it will be a very beautiful scenario. It will be really a research forum where people have come and they will just picture with you and the scholar there as, as if they have learned something. And that's good. So they bring at home as a memory of their forum attendance, even though they are sleeping while others are proclaiming. Okay? The poster should be able to stand on its own as a clear, logical presentation of your work without any explanation from you. A good poster will meet the guidelines for the specific events. This is a theological forum, so it's meet the theological guidelines. Match the audience knowledge based on and interest. Focus your message. What is the one thing you want people to remember when they look at your poster? Convey your message visually. Be readable from about four to six feet away. And finally, be clearly organized. Poster content. Posters typically include many of the sections listed below. The title, okay, the collaborators, if there are. Because today, it research they respect research if there are more authors on it. Two heads are better than one. We call it collaborative research. Then, of course, your abstract background, the research question, the material approach, the result conclusion, the future direction, the acknowledgement, and the contact information. Here is a sample of a poster presentation from De La Salle University, Cyber Ethics and Theology. Very simple, okay, very simple. It is a book, by the way, produced, the author produced it as a book after the research presentation. We're all familiar with podium presentation. Please focus on the essence of your research and eliminate unnecessary background information and lengthy discussion. Your presentation should be an abstract in PowerPoint form. Please do not read your slides. Please include the following title slides. Avoid thanking your co-authors. We know that you appreciate their contribution to research, but that's not a time for that. Immediately proceed to the purpose hypothesis, a couple of background of your materials and methods. How did you do your research? Then the result of your study. Discussion. And finally, give only one or two conclusion slides. And finally, your presentation should not be more than 20 slides. In an international forum, they require you that. If you go to a big research forum, they will count your slides. And they will really eliminate if there are more than 20. The shorter, the better. Now, let's come to the publication, which is the heart of my presentation. To deliver high-quality content with the highest transparency and clearest ethic behavior, a series of procedures are followed. Number one, your paper should be electronically submitted. Today, they don't want to submit it in hard copies. Okay? Send it through mail. But before we do that, you should find, you start with a local journal. Do not attempt already, if you're a beginner, to send it to an international journal. That may be an, ex at, uh, an, an, an exception if it will be accepted. But start with a local journal. So here, is your journal accepted by IAS? What is the title of the journal here? I was receiving before, now no more. Because I have not been paying. So uh, When Ruby was uh, the secretary, I think Ruby retired already. Uh, she used to send me uh, a copy of that. Okay? So... Be a member here. Where are other? Now, in connection with pluralism that we were talking about, don't just submit it in an Adventist publication. Send it. <laughs> Test the water with other publications. Correct? Send it to the Philippine Baptist. Uh, what was our journal? It is the uh, Philippine Journal of Religious Studies. That's the Baptist journal. Okay? You can see some, some writings of an Adventist like me there. Okay. So if they accept your paper, then that's good. Or you can send it to our journal at Manila Adventist College. We call it the MAC Interdisciplinary 
Journal of Research. Interdisciplinary because it includes education, allied health, social sciences, business, religious, and theological education. There are five. So that the journal will carry at least two or three presentations every. And it's not just easy. You know, our first journal, we stopped because we did not, we had to go to the process of peer reviewed. It's not easy. It has to be peer reviewed before you finally publish it. Okay, so send it electronically. Then you have to peer review your journal. I will appeal this afternoon. Sometimes we are Adventists in name, but we don't care about the others. Other institutions, we don't care. They're not part of ours. And luck has nothing to do with MAC or AUP. I hope that's not the spirit or IAS. Let's accept the cordiality as we do research. If they have their journal in AUP, you can accept our journal and we can send our proposals and abstracts. The same thing with people from the others. Because this is what they do in other universities and colleges. Newly submitted manuscript will first be screened by the... You should have... The first requirement is your editorial board. And you should have a qualified editorial board. Without that, your journal will be a failure. It will just be... Ningas Kugon. Magsisimula lang. Pag wala ka na, uh, Pastor, and it will be gone. Now, it should not be like that. Okay? Have a qualified journal, uh, board of editorials. Manuscript may be rejected at this stage. So don't be discouraged. My first article I sent to the JATS, it was rejected. My good friend Ed Christian was the editor in chief at that time. Two of the reviewers said, the paper is like a liberation theology presentation of an Adventist. Two of them did not like. I received the comment. They sent it to me. And I said, that's okay with me. So I sent another paper. This time they like it. The biography of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Ed Christian said, accepted. All the three peer reviewers accepted it. The biography of the devil. An alternative approach to the cosmic conflict. I did not use the word great controversy because it will be read by others. It was my paper submitted to the Baptist seminary, so I had to use the word universal conflict. It was a biography, even though biography is to be written at the end of one's life, correct? I argued in the paper that biblically I know the end of Lucifer, correct? We, biblically, we know who is the end, so I can write the biography. And the panel said, okay, it's accepted. I had to look at the Hebrew background and the Syrian interstamestal background. You do your research. And it was accepted. I'm just sharing to you my, my experience. Then I sent another one, Towards a Theology of Religion in a Nation Context. And they accepted it. And so, it's a paper being used. I'm, I'm so grateful other papers are... You know, your paper should not be on this level alone. This is the challenge I'm trying to give you. Because if your paper is worth printing, it will be a reference for other papers to be done. Not only in the circle of Adventists, but outside of the Adventists. I received 25 papers responding to my paper that they have used my paper on the biography of the devil when they were studying satanology, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a forbidden ground, so let's be very careful on that, okay? Now, how will you choose the reviewer? Now, I, 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 I will request you who have your PhD, make yourself available to be peer reviewers. These are not paid, by the way. <laughs> Pag nagbayad yung, if, if the, the journal will pay you, that's okay. It is... Uh, most of the time, it is gratis only. But it will be a part of your what? You're a peer reviewer of a journal. So even now, I'm not doing a peer review here. My name is still in their journal, Hilat Ayas. But the school is wrong already. It's CPA. I'm not in CPA. CPAC. I do not know why they removed my, my other school. But please, 
avail yourselves and make you available as they say because you learn from those papers not only in sitting as a panel member for a dissertation depends but in the peer review of articles you will learn a lot from those papers i tell you i sit down last year i had an african paper presented at the baptist seminary i cannot understand the paper but you know i tried to to analyze the paper and it was a very good one and of course they pay you high amount and 10,000, and that will be good enough. Okay? A reviewer is asked to evaluate whether the manuscript is theologically sound, original, relevant, clear, whether it correctly referenced previous work, and whether it falls within the scope of the journal. So peer review is very, very important. Then you have your publication what? Ethics. Okay. Those of you who are doing your IAS, AATS, and I think you're doing your paper, you have to write. Uh, I went and ate at my student's house, Pastor Lowell. I forced him to feed us today because it was announced that the forum will not feed the family, so I asked them. But I brought my baon with me, of course. And I was telling her, his wife, yesterday, I was texting Carmela. Carmela is our research director. She has newly finished her doctor of nursing. And she is our research director, a very, very good research director. I will assure you that. And we are just formulating our, our guidelines on ethics. There should be an ethics review board. And you may say, this is theological. But this is not just an, on practical aspect. You will be dealing with other aspects of research, like taking samples of people, women, and so on and so forth. They need to have ethical review. And you need to have your ethical review guidelines or checklists to evaluate the research, whether it is acceptable or not. So it's not just peer-reviewed. It is ethically reviewed. So nobody can sue you to court because it has been approved by an accredited review board. May I make that very clear? It should be accredited. So to us in our accrediting board, in our journal, huh? we have not released the first, why? Because it has to be reviewed by an ethical board. It has to have a lawyer, a medical doctor, so Dr. Makaya, Dr. Barona, the research consultant of, of uh, MAMSI, plus one more lay person who is in the field of business and so on, plus two, plus two academicians will be a part of that group. Okay, They will review that. On Thursday, it's a whole afternoon for us at MAC to sit down. All the research of our students and faculty will go through that one by one. And if one of the members will say it is not accepted, then you throw the paper away. Okay, So it's not just easy that we publish. And then transparency. We are committed to the quality, efficiency, and transparency of the editorial process. Send them. What was wrong with the paper? You know, I like the editor, Ed Christian. He became a good friend of mine when we were exchanging papers. You know, he tells you, this was the comment of the reviewer, and if you can change this one or revise this one or find a better journal or a backup of this statement you made here, then that is acceptable. It will be changed. So you have to be transparent. Why? You know, we, I had a, an article submitted by one of our deans, the dean of Arlid Health. It was reviewed by De La Salle University, the dean. <laughs> and the dean, you know, if you are from the outside, is a little bit sarcastic. And, you know, end it now. Okay, so I will end it now. Ah. Uh. The production process, okay, so you know the production process, the editing, everything there. And then I will go to that. No more? What's the name last? The last slide. The last slide. Yeah. Look at the last slide. Son, I don't see your name here. Can you please check under the publish or perish category? <laughs> Fellow theologians and Bible teachers and church leaders, if we need to survive, this is salvation by works. 
Research has to be done. It's not done by prayer. It has to be done by earnest study, careful investigation, and the asking of wisdom from God to give us so that we can do things to elevate and discover new things, how to make God's work better. May God bless all of us. Okay, we can have one question. Anyone? Lana? No more? Okay, thank you very much for uh, the presentation. Okay, um, uh, this is a challenge for us, uh, for AATS. Uh, ho uh, I hope that uh, we'll be able to have our journal published this year. Okay, I'll give now the time to uh, Marfield.